Riding shotgun refers to the practice of sitting next to the driver in a moving vehicle. The term riding shotgun came around after the time of the stagecoach, when somebody used to sit next to the driver holding a shotgun, in case they ran into bandits. My name is Charlie Cook, and I drive a lot. I like to talk to people while I'm driving, so I interview people in my car while I'm driving. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Before we start this episode of Writing Shotgun with Charlie, I want to say thank you to everyone that is watching the show. I really appreciate it. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do. Um, it's it's good for all things YouTube, and I greatly appreciate you guys being here. If you like the show, if you get something out of it, please share it with your people. This is how we get the stagecoach across America. All right, welcome to this episode of Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Today we are outside Detroit Rock City. I can't say it any other way. <laughs> uh, we, we are outside Detroit, and I have with me Antonia Akafar. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm... Gotta shake my hand. Girl. Oh yes, sorry. This is, this is how we do it. <laughs> um, so we are here, real quick. We are here at an event for Rick Ector, and we're teaching several hundred women how yeah. to shoot and be safe. Um, some for some some of the ladies, it's their first introduction to firearms, and uh, some ladies are a little nervous, and I can't necessarily blame them. But yeah. um, <laughs> some some of them make me a little nervous too. Um, I think that's which is totally that's cool. part of it, it right? It, it, is it that really is. there's some risk involved, there, but there is uh, some risk involved. and you just hope you know. I so I yeah, know. so my, my goal with this is to to hope that. Um, the people that know less about firearms know more about firearms mm -hmm. and maybe know something different about firearms than they see everywhere else they get stuff, you know, yeah. from, from TV and movies and stuff. But yeah. but that's what we're here, so um, uh, that's what we're here doing, but we're here to talk about you instead. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I'm honored Could to not be have me, you on really. the show. Guys, I am, uh, no, I'm not held up near my, <laughs> against my own will. I'm right. here completely voluntarily. I'm so glad we did that because <laughs> we might need it for the case. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh man, he got me there. Man, I can't even say anything now. Right? Uh, all on video. It's all. Um, video. Yes. No. Thank you. I'm glad we could finally make this work. Me too. Um, I know <laughs> the first the first time I approached you about this, I know you had no idea who I was, and you're like, some guy wants to get in the car and drive around. I don't know about this. <laughs> like, this this is I a little shady. That was when I wasn't that when I was in Massachusetts. <laughs> yes. Yes. You, you came Mount Holyoke and everything. Came out and spoke at Mount Holyoke. Oh my goodness. And, uh, yeah. Yes. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm still gonna ask. I'm still gonna get a picture and everything. will be cool. <laughs> I was. That was in my early days where I didn't have like a rental car. Like I was driven around by other students and nice. stuff. Because I was. That was the you know the, the the early days where I'm just scrounging around, just trying right. to spread the message of gun rights or one's rights to all of the students across the country. Mm. And, um, did not have any uh, means of hey, I can be here at this time. That's that's. And, up. So I, I'm glad that um, things are different now. You know, yes, I can are... buy add rental car money. Okay, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we can do this. So thank you so much. I don't, which is why. I'm oh, okay. Oops. Time driving around the country. <laughs> <laughs> right? well, I'm like, well. you know what, Detroit's. This is how I measured it. Detroit's two tanks of gas. <laughs> I like that. I like it. Oh, you know, it's, it's two tanks of gas. Yeah, it's, that's right? important. That is important to know. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so we we finally get to uh, get to have you on the show, and I'm I'm honored. Thank you very much. Um, all right, so how did you become a gun gal, and how did more importantly, how did you become outspoken about about the the women empowerment? Man, uh, gun gal. Where did you grow I up? See. Where did you grow up? Right, yeah. So I grew up in Dallas, Texas, right. and um, so I'm a Texas native. My parents are Nigerian immigrants, so that dynamic is interesting. But essentially, I did not grow up. I think people think Texas, and they just automatically think you have some background in being like hunting, like you grew up hunting with your family, or some type of exposure to firearms. Like I was as probably as stereotypical that 
the Democrat family that mm. didn't really have any firearms and I was essentially individually afraid of them because I just yeah. knew I was never going to deal with firearms. I mean, come on. Um, but I, I actually went to college and realized pretty quickly that about the real world. Mm. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, as a sexual assault survivor, which I am um, being in college, which actually started out, so like I said, I was anti-gun anti-second amendment um very much a democrat not saying necessarily that that has to correlate right right? but that was my story um also i was not a believer i'm I'm now i believe i'm a christian so there are a lot of dynamics happening Mm. in college is what i was trying i'm trying to say and in college when i became a believer a lot of big things uh really changed in me my worldview i mean i'm christian and one of the biggest things is realizing that like this preciousness of life Right? Like, mm. not only in my other political views of like being pro life, but realizing that as a woman, if I'm, if I'm really truly a feminist, as a, and I would have been called myself a feminist at that time, especially, uh, if I want to empower women, if I want to empower myself, because I've been trying to do that for so long, my whole life, essentially, of being a survivor of you know sexual assault, trying to find that empowerment that I lost when I was young, mm-hmm. you know, back. Then, really, the best way for me to do that. Uh, especially with all these sexual assaults that are happening on college campuses, particularly even on my campus at the time, then... It's to arm yourself. It's to arm myself and to arm other women. Yeah. And and my peers, especially, particularly students. So not only other women, but students. And so I really got pretty active in the student activist, like two-way student activism world. Mm -hmm. Um, I became the Southwest Director for Student for Concealed Carry really um, early on in my journey in school. And then after that, um, you know, Campus Carry passed, so that's Concealed Carry on college campuses. And I just became really passionate about advocating for that. That's cool. I, so this is... I, one of the things that, that concerns me about when, when people talk about the age, and I know right around now people are talking about, well, 18-year-olds shouldn't have assault oh, weapons. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say assault weapons. I'm making a funny voice. <laughs> but they shouldn't have evil black rifles, and uh, they shouldn't yeah. have this. But so they're racist. still... Right. It's... They're st- <laughs> if we just change the color of the rifles. Right. Oh. Right. Oh, right now. I don't know. That's another. Any- <laughs> anyway. Um... <laughs> Uh, they want to restrict the rights of, of adults that are 18. And, mm-hmm. and we, we've, we have, as a society, have decided 18 is when you're an adult. But you're yeah. 18, an adult, and you can sign up for thousands of dollars in, in college debt. Mm-hmm. But you can't have particular types of firearms. And, oh, by the way, when you're in college, uh, you can't really protect yourself here. Right. And, and, and I mean, just the debt is one thing for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that the matter is that 18, you can go to war and die for your country. You right. Can, there's so many things that, as an 18-year-old, I mean, yes on paper but also in the society that you are an adult um and i mean even besides that at the end of the day you have your human you have every right to defend your life um but so that it was an interesting narrative how quickly they the anti-gun side would change that of like because you're a student that's therefore suddenly oh if you're gonna have a gun oh no of course everyone's an alcoholic when oh can't have a gun because you're an alcoholic pretty sure i was not an alcoholic um when I did, before I decided to do this, I'm a responsible adult, doing right. responsible things, trying to get an education like most people are. And besides that, if I can go off campus, literally step off campus and have my concealed carry and it'd be okay, why can I not use that same means of defense on campus? Yeah. Where I actually live like 90% of my time, mm-hmm. you know? So that was my argument. That was what the argument was of students con- for concealed carry. So um, that was, and also back then, like it like, seems not really that long ago. It was like t- that was 2015, 2014. <laughs> but that was almost that was radical in the two A world to allow. Okay, yeah, students having guns. I thought that's a different matter. Like, uh, unfortunately, it wasn't everybody on board with that in the beginning. So it was an interesting uh, life. <laughs> I have to say this. I'm gonna put this picture up uh, when we're talking about this. But okay. the picture of you with the long straight hair in okay. the red dress. Oh, mercy, mercy, mercy! And then I found out. Oh my God, she's just a young girl. Holy crap! Oh. <laughs> you look so much older in that picture. Uh, it's the red. It's the it's, red. Uh, yeah. I don't know what it is, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm sitting here processing this. I'm like, I'm not sure how old she is, and I'm not gonna ask. Well, but, I was a grad student, so I wasn't okay. like 18. Okay. Right. But 
<laughs> but if you look at that, you're like, yeah, dude, she's got to be late 20s. Maybe. Oh, no. And you're like, yeah, no. <laughs> no. Well, there's there's a lot of, there was a lot of, I'm sure I would have been actually older than what, what I, I was putting on, but right. um, I, I was definitely not the typical grad student. wasn't yeah, 22 no. coming out, you know, to college, but right. um, at the end of the day, yeah, it was just like, I was actually at the age where where most people could, who like, can get a permit was mm-hmm. over 21. Like, right. So even with Campus Carry, it was like, look, this is not even, this is maybe 5% of most college campuses. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were fighting with that. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, that went through in Texas, because we're in Texas, it's not Massachusetts we were talking free, about. Free, I call it right? free America <laughs> and occupied territory. That's I, I, yeah, yeah. So, and not even Austin. Um, it was you know, a Dallas, Texas girl. So, uh, I wasn't really hitting too much of that full-on anti-gun world mm-hmm. until I decided to go on tour and mm-hmm. start spreading the message of gun rights. Um, and that's where I, I led to move to you, right? And and, yeah. and, and, and all in Massachusetts and that my whole tour over there with Mount Holyoke and uh, what they call the five sisters, with the seven sisters. Is that what that is? The mess- I don't know. Some uh, There's a certain amount of sisters. And they're all apparently right next to each other, and they all are right. anti-gun. Oh, <laughs> it is Massachusetts. It is occupied yeah. territory. Yeah. 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 I, I do remember this. There was, um, I, I was impressed with this. There was one person, and I'm using person. Okay. Because uh, they're like, well, I'm gender fluid. And I'm like, gender, like, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> gender fluid to like your parts don't change do they Mm -hmm. like and I was and I gotta tell you I thought you handled it like a pro oh okay you know I I, it like watching this person yeah (laughs) no you you did you handle it absolutely like a pro um, there was no mudslinging. You, you stood your ground of you know what I'm a Christian and I believe in a man and a woman and 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 stuck to that and they they didn't like it. I'm like, no, oh, this, this person's a wacko. <laughs> I mean, you well, can, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's always okay to you know have your truth as long as your truth you know correlates and corresponds with their truth. Then then it's okay to have your truth. But if it <laughs> doesn't, it definitely then it's not truth at all. Apparently, um, but. I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, for like, I've always taken it this way is that I'm going to speak the truth, but you can speak the truth in love. Again, mm-hmm. like being a Christian, that's literally what we should be doing. So yeah. regardless of my, our, my topic that I, God <laughs> decided I'm going to talk about, um, just by, I have no idea that this is my lot in life, right? To, mm-hmm. to, to, to be passionate about this very touchy subject in America. But at the end of the day, I'm passionate about it because I believe in it full, you know, wholeheartedly. And yeah. um, but I also know it doesn't mean I I need to be I don't need to be crass and, and rude and oh sure horrible I mean, to people, people because yeah. they're they can be horrible back and that's fine. But I would think at the end of the day, like my mission is to persuade and change hearts and minds. And mm-hmm. I think if I can do that one person at a time with a you know, being straightforward with what I believe in, but doing it in a way that's respectful and wants them to engage in the future, mm-hmm. I think I've done my job. So, um, even if it's someone, I, I think you were at, you were at Mount Holyoke. Is that the one that you're talking about? Yeah. I would, okay. Uh, I yeah, you were Mount. So that was the day after they canceled my. Speech. Yes, that's right. Yes. They can't. Oh gosh, they canceled <laughs> it somewhere else. Yeah. Yes, I think it was Hampton. Is it? What's that really leftist college in? <laughs> You're like really Antonio. Well, okay. No, I know there's leftist colleges in Massachusetts, but <laughs> really leftist. It wasn't Smith, um, was it? No, no, it wasn't Smith. I feel like it was Hampton. Hampton? It might have been Hampton. It was Hampton. Yeah, Yeah, because, and I think that's, yeah, yeah, for many reasons. I think there was a meme that came out of that that place. A lot of things from that that school. But one big thing was that this originally was supposed to be an event, because a very small school, very Mm -hmm. small, like. Yeah, a little small. I don't even know how many people were really going to be at that event. But at the end of the day, they decided last, like, literally, I was leaving my hotel room that evening an hour before my speech get an email saying the student who put on the whole event i'm so sorry the administrators just canceled your event quote unquote your event literal quote the second amendment is too controversial of a con- of a topic we're going to have to cancel this so this little event that should have probably maybe even had not in a room a classroom full of people 
became interna- literal international news yeah. within the evening. Um, so thank you, Absolutely. Hampton College, <laughs> for spreading the Second you. Amendment. Right. Um, All right. But that was that was the that's day before that, before Mount Holyoke. Gotcha. So that, that's why I think Mount Holyoke was so big mm. because of the, the t- attention it, the other speech got. So that would make sense. So it was interesting. But. So how does how does all of this uh, how does all of this lead to lead to the other stuff? You you you, yeah. you, you had the the, the uh, campus kill. Uh, yeah, students for concealed carry. So Thank campus you. carry. And then, uh, then you made some. You you did some stuff with uh, Turning Point USA. You did some stuff with Prior U. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Did stuff with NRA as well. Right. Um, basically, all of that just sharing my story. But that's in 2017. I saw. I you know I was a passionate about obviously the stuff with uh, college campuses, but. I've always had that yearning, like I want to do something to specifically help women. You know, mm-hmm. not saying you know again. Every there's a lot of vulnerable groups, including students, but women sure. especially. And I and I resonated with that the most. But so I started an organization. Couldn't really see that. Um, I didn't really see something that was an organization, a Second Amendment organization that was specifically geared towards college age women, mm-hmm. um, women like at that time, like my, myself. And so I started Empower 2A and that was geared towards college women. I decided really quickly to start a tour to speak on that and talk to other people about, uh, other women especially, about why the Second Amendment actually empowers them as a young person and how it's pivotal that we reach them at this point point in their lives before they become mothers before they become wives where unfortunately you do you i saw especially at that time moms demand action like Mm -hmm. that type of almost roadmap for so many women when really women are the most empowered and uh get the most benefit from being second amendment believers and actually exercising that right as well. There's, I've heard so many people say that, um, and one of them particularly is, is uh, the Reverend Ken Blanchard. He said that if you can get the women to become mm. gun owners and to not be afraid of firearms and take that away from them, it's going to be, yes, you yes. can get the whole family to do mm-hmm. it because women spend more time, I mean, speaking traditionally, <laughs> um, women spend more time with the kids, they're at home more often, um, they're they're the ones that are taking care of the home, they're taking care of the kids, mm-hmm. um, while the dad is out, out working or living and, and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, the women are with the kids, and he says, if you can get the if you get the women, then then you can get the rest of the family into it. And I, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I remember when when I was a, a married man, um, uh, I remember saying, hey, listen, I wanna I wanna buy an AR, and and my wife was like, well, yeah, you can get one of those, but we got this debate, we got this debate, we got this, we got mm-hmm. this, and it just became it, it was like far down on the list of it was a want more than a need right and so it, it's it need, yeah it, right? it just made its way to the bottom of the list of things yeah it's, it's so imperative and you know empower to is now part of gun Owners america uh, i joined goa in 2019 and it's the women's outreach for gun owners and now it's not just for college women it's also for all it's for women of all ages yeah um and so it's evolved, but it's also evolved, like, <laughs> not necessarily, like, I needed it to be this way, but now from me being a college student, you know, you know, not even having the ability to figure out if I'm going to be one place or another, right? I didn't have rental car money uh, seven years ago. Now I have two kids, married, <laughs> you know, living in Houston primarily. And so it's just... It's, I am that demographic now. I am the what I yeah. used to be. Like, think okay, if there is anything for women, it tend to it tended only to be for women with kids and the mama bear, uh, you know, I, aesthetic and narrative that I just did not resonate with at the time. Now I'm a, I'm the mama bear. Yeah, <laughs> now I have two little ones, and I in every stage of life though I've been able to see how imperative it's been that I've been able to carry and, and defend myself. So mm. as a, a young independent you know, single woman going to Massachusetts and DC and all these places where people know like, Hey, there's that gun girl. There's the gun girl. And I don't like you. Um, right. to, to still, I don't like Antonia, but, um, <laughs> she has two kids, you know, <laughs> right. You know, going, going from free America yeah. to occupied territory, you know, mass and DC and, and speaking in New York, and New Jersey and Connecticut, um, you, you can't, you know, right. you, can't, you can't bring your hardware with you, right? Right. Unless you want to get yourself in a heap of trouble, right? So, um, yeah, 
it's it's yeah and even with the brewing case and everything and mm. a great victory um it, it's it's hard it's, though it's just a it's nice to the, like that the Constitution, not even the Constitution, but really the, the Supreme Court's interpretation of the Constitution is catching up with mm. what it's always been. But <laughs> it's always been a human right, All and right. the Constitution already, you know, backed that up. But um, I'm glad that you guys are, and the right. Supreme Court is saying, yeah, you do, you do have that. Thank you. I knew that. But mm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. So hopefully the states catch up with that. That's the thing. That would be good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah my state's fighting it mm, and kicking sure. and screaming. I'm sure. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kicking it, everybody's kicking and screaming about yeah. it. All, all the the, uh, the states that were the mayish, uh, sorry, the shall, the mayish states are still uh, the, they're not happy about the decision, which is stupid. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, before we get back to the recoil range to teach ladies how to shoot, um, you had a testimony recently. So I'm, I'm going to put a link to this. Yes, yes, I did. It was six-hour hearing. Six hours. <laughs> uh, man, um, of essentially, it's a, it was a witch hunt of so Uvalde, Buffalo. I mean, really, it didn't have to be any recent mass shooting. It was them trying to essentially say that all the gun industry is going to needs to be responsible for for mass shootings and right so we need to be they, responsible for the illegal activity right of, absolutely of bad people. absolutely that's mm. that's what that was called for and so i i was thankful that i was one of the witness i was actually mm, i want to say i'm only on the pro gun side i can't say that when we had you know gun manufacturers there but um, in person i was the only person on our side um in person they were virtual so mm -hmm. just a different dynamic but uh it was uh smith and wesson and i'm sorry smith wesson wasn't by wasn't there ruger and daniel defense, daniel defense were yeah. uh testifying essentially and um i was as well as well as the brady campaign and uh the boosie guy from you know shall not be named um, manufacturer um, <laughs> right. that is now on the Giffords campaign. So that was an interesting dynamic it's, <laughs> for six hours. It really seems that, that people go from being, uh, I call it a gun agnostic, where mm. it's, you know, yeah. you're not, you're not pro-gun, you're not against it, you're not for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, it seems to be you go from being a gun agnostic to being pro-gun or being anti-gun to being pro-gun it hardly ever seems to be people go from pro-gun to anti-gun. Mm. Right, there's only a few people that do that. Right, right, right. And right. Then, then you just kind of sit there and you're like, well, wait a second, how could they, how could they switch sides? And it's like, and I think I think of it in like the Christian world. I mean, mm -hmm. I can go into theology here. Uh, my, my husband, my uh, seminary husband, you know, seminary grad husband might be proud of me at this, but he's essentially <laughs> when, and I'm forgetting the term, so maybe he's not going to be proud of me. But essentially it's when people, it, it's the whole um, tulip thing, right? It's the whole Calvinist versus Arminian of, were you really a believer to begin with, right? Can you lose your salvation? Or did you even have it to begin with? I don't know if that correlates, but essentially it's like, were they really though, were they really pro gun or were they really pro two way, right? right? Just, is that, or were they just doing what they needed to do to be in that business? To, right, to have a job. And so exactly. Be, and so I think yeah. that's more and more what I, it comes down to is that really listen to what people are saying and see, do they really believe you have an individual right to keep and bear arms it's not very it's not hard it's maybe it's hard to like apply maybe it's pretty simple though the constitution the second amendment is pretty simple is but the thing is do you actually believe every one of those 27 words mm. right and so if you do you're probably you're gonna probably say consistent but if you have things like that where you've been a firearms exec for 25 years and you're now testifying and saying things like you citizen you civilian you don't need an ar-15 um and all along i didn't really believe that then it's just like man what what were you, were you a believer in the first place right so anyways a lot i had a lot of time to think six hours of staying there waiting <laughs> how long uh, did you get to speak 
<laughs> I had five minutes of testimony. Yeah. Uh, so I got to speak about my story, kind of like I just talked about right now. Um, and then a lot of just, you know, I had some surprise gotchas. It's got one of the congressmen had a old fire, uh, an old Facebook post from 2020 and was like, do you remember in 2020, this, this whole like beautiful poster he had, you know, revealed it with my, my 2020, uh, you know, hashtags. And then says, do you remember in 2020 when you had, I said what I said, defund the ATF ma'am right and he's like all serious and he's just getting at me like i'm being scolded by my dad and i i'm just i'm just gonna say yes or no i'm just like okay here i am thinking it's gonna be like this really like bad thing that they found on me like some tweet i when i was 12 <laughs> years old like right. in my space or something and they have do you remember saying that you wanted to defund the atf to abolish atf and i was like yes yeah like, is this is this is this your Facebook post? It's like, I'm not on Facebook anymore, but I'll humor you here. Yes, in right. 2020, this was my Facebook post. Also, I still believe I this still on the ATF. This. <laughs> and oh man, oh. talk about getting in trouble with Congress oh after my gosh. that. So they, and they actually, uh, they asked other people. It was just like, again, witch hunt. Like, oh, so this woman, this crazy extremist believes to defund the ATF despite all the great things that they do on restricting right. all the great gun things they do. rights. <laughs> right. So the ATF is really just PF. <laughs> I don't know what they do for alcohol. I'm oh, not yeah. sure what they do about tobacco, but they spend a lot of time worrying about guns. They do worry about the F part a lot. And, I, you know, I I would think someone who's pro-gun or pro-second amendment and she's not, you would automatically know that we wouldn't be fans of the ATF. Apparently that's not, that's not a thing. Right. So, again, be pro-second amendment, pro-gun, pro two different things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it boggles my mind that, I mean, we've had a history of this with the last, with the, the new uh, head of the ATF and the, and the people that have been proposed recently, they're, they're all anti-gun. What if they were anti-alcohol? What if we had a teetotaler that was like, hey, listen, that is, I, uh, what a concept. I'm off the sauce. I've never smoked a cigarette. I don't like cigars. I'm heading up the ATF. Right. Wait a second. You don't partake. <laughs> in two of the three letters. Right. And, and it's not even the ATF, like, the Bureau of Anti-Alcohol Tobacco and Firearms right. Bureau, no, but it just, it, it's be become de facto. Alcohol, tobacco and firearms. Right. It's the, become <laughs> the de facto uh, position for for ATF directors to be anti-gun and, and to make it seem like... And, and another thing that happened the whole testimony and the whole time there was very much of the distinction of it's a weapon of war. This is a weapon of war. This is not a weapon of war. And one of the great con congressmen there were like, hey, um, former firearms exec, you said you're in the military, right? Right. Uh, didn't they use 1911s for a lot of this time? 1911s are a weapon of war. I mean, how many times do we say... Yeah. Right. Exactly. And it's like, at the end of the day, look, there shouldn't be a distinction, even if there is a weapon of war, if this is an if weapon of war, even though the AR-15 is actually the civilian version of an M M4, yeah. right? Then the, the whole point, though, is you are not, as a government body, even if you're unelected or elected, are supposed to be infringing on my right to keep and bear any arm. There is Absolutely. no distinction. And so... Again, I got in trouble again. But after that, <laughs> after that, uh, I said my piece, and uh, I, I tried to be quiet. So <laughs> that's what I. That was that was my experience. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's ridiculous that there's there's uh, there's a pro freedom caucus and an anti freedom caucus. I know it and really shouldn't be a thing. It really shouldn't. We should I, not I have get to distinguish it. I um I said this a million times before. The um the pro gun folks. Mm. Right, mm -hmm. We're, we all become family. Yeah, we see each other at events like yes. I like this. Yeah, our um, reunions. Yeah, there are they are family <laughs> reunions because you watch people in social media see them testing yes. in front of Congress. You're like, hey, I know her. <laughs> hey, we're friends. Um, it really is a homecoming, and there's there's some people that are. Um, there's some people that aren't great people, and that's fine, because uh, it, it does take all types. But yeah, <laughs> the, that's true. The overwhelming majority of of, of gun folks are 
um, are willing to give you time mm. and energy and effort. And if you're uh, if you're not a if you're a gun agnostic, the pro gun folks will probably take you to the range and, and let you shoot their guns and ammo for free what? and have yeah. a good time with it. We will. That is one thing. Even when ammo was, you know, very hard to come fought, come by. Really, like at the end of the day, it was like, all right. I mean, I know I'm never gonna. Like past opportunity for especially an anti-gun person. But my family members were coming to me during the pandemic, mm. and I mean, just it's been a cr the last two years have been a dream. I think for those who are pro Second Amendment, mm -hmm. because it's like went from literally. I I mean, conservatively, I would even still use the numbers twenty two percent of gun owners are women. You literally after the last two years, it's forty two percent of gun owners are now women. That's cool. Isn't that amazing? That's awesome. Two years, like how crazy and different things have changed. But um, with that is a great responsibility. We have a it's lot like of things like this, yeah. right? We have a lot of opportunity and responsibility to help train those people and to help get them to know the knowledge of like, no, no, assault weapons bans are not okay. Mm. There's no, oh, 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 this, okay, this, this is fine, but I don't need, I don't see why you don't, you need this. No. So this is a great opportunity to educate and, and to do the training and stuff like that. Um, but it's also a really diverse one. It's more women, more minorities of mm -hmm. the 48% of, of women, of the 8 million of women who became gun owners in 2020 and 22, um, 21% of them are black women. And that's what we're seeing here in Detroit, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. So uh, it's great to see. I love seeing it. It makes me so happy. Um, but we just have a lot of work to do still. We have. So It's all good stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. We got to go. You got to right. go. You got to go. Yeah. Teach. We got to go train. How can people yeah. find you and all your stuff? <sighs> you can find us. Find me. GOA. Good Owners of America. Of course. Follow follow us there. Um, but you can follow me at Antonia underscore Okafor. Um, on Spell Instagram, before. Twitter, O K A F as in Frank O R. All right. <laughs> yeah, when I saw that, I'm like, wait a second. Uh, I'm glad this? you asked. I'm glad you asked. Yes, yes. It's, <laughs> it, it is good. It is good. All right, listen, thank you so much for being on the thank show. Thank you for this having me. This is my me. pleasure. Thank you. It's, it's an honor. The honor's mine. Um, if you are not a member of the Second Amendment Foundation, you can join at saf.org. You can contribute to the Committee for the Citizens' Right to Keep and Bear Arms at ccrbka.org. And you can find all of your pro-freedom podcasts in one place at the Self-Defense Radio Network, which is sdrn.us. And we're going to put links for all of your stuff. Thank you. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Thank you very much. Okay.